This episode is brought to you by C Major 7 Studios, a production, mixing, and mastering studio here in Honolulu, Hawaii. They've worked with people such as J-Bug, Kimye, and The Green. Make sure you check them out at www.cmajor7.com. Aloha, everybody. Welcome to the Hawaii Verse podcast, a podcast that supports local by singing from your heart, thinking with your na'al, and living with aloha. I'm your host, Kamaka Diaz, and remember to always keep it aloha. Before we introduce our guest, I just want to remind you to check out my Patreon at patreon.com slash if you love this podcast and want to support us. Okay, let's introduce our guest because I am so stoked for this episode. Our guest today is a native Hawaiian, Portuguese, Grammy-nominated producer, singer-songwriter, and recording artist from the Big Island of Hawaii. She has written and co-produced five award-winning albums, including the Grammy-nominated album, Hawaiian Lullaby, and most recently produced Children of the Sea, Nakamakai, a full-length album from her free community mentorship program called Mele Craft Bootcamp dedicated to supporting young artists and honoring the Hawaiian culture and language. In 2018, she won the Nahoku Hanohano Award for Female Vocalist of the Year, Song of the Year for her song Bamboo, and Female Artist of the Year at the Island Music Awards. This mother of three is also the president and CEO of Haku Collective, which is a full-service multimedia talent production and management group founded in Honolulu, Hawaii. She is super impressive and one of my favorite artists to listen to. Her name is Kimie Minor. Aloha, Kimie. Welcome to the podcast here at C Major 7 Studio. How are you doing? Oh, I'm so good. That was a great <laughs> intro. Thank you. I was just listing the things that you've done. <laughs> so you made it Aww. easy. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that was, that was great. Mahalo. <laughs> it was nice to, you know, officially meet you and talk stories with you. We've been planning this for a while. You're actually one of my dream guests. You know, I have wow, my guest no list <laughs> and I have my dream guest list. So I'm I'm so stoked that you're here. I've been a fan since I saw you at the Republic at, uh, I don't know, like 2013, 2014. I don't know oh when it was. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, so wow, super stoked that we're you. doing this. And I'm excited to learn more about you. And I, I'm sure everybody is excited to learn more about you as well. So before we get into everything, I got to know where are you from, where are you grad, and what was it like growing up? <laughs> yes, yeah, so I'm. I actually was born here on Oahu. My family's from Waimanalo, and Mauna Loa, but I claim Big Island heart because that's where <laughs> I've lived most of my life since I was in first grade. And I went Kamehameha Kapalama School. And what was the other one? Uh, where are you guys? So Kamehameha, and what was it like growing up? Oh, what was it like growing yeah. up? Ooh. Okay, how, how long do I have? <laughs> as long as you need. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, typical ocean-minded family. My dad's a surfer. He picks up he when we go beach. So it's kind of we bring everything to the beach, and then we see what the conditions are, and that's how we enjoy the, the ocean. So it's either picking up he throwing nets, surfing, paddleboarding, those kinds of things. That's how I grew up. Uh, music always, always had been gravitated towards music. I think everybody in Hawaii feels that way. Mm-hmm. Uh, my family, my dad had a nylon string guitar. My mom and dad would sing. And um, I just loved music always. So I think the ocean was big for us. Um, I remember one time my dad caught a Samoan crab when we were still living in Hawaii Kai, Mauna Lua. And I was so upset because it was the first time I ever heard a crab boiling mm. in the water and it sounded like it was crying and that stuck with me so then I became a vegetarian but um yeah that was sort of my childhood was just like my juice can of juice would taste like fish there was just fish and crab and opihi and all the coolers everywhere mm. we went you know it was just that ocean water life um which i love and now i have my own family and it's sort of we're raising them the same way so it's really nice yeah and you married into a a really ocean-minded family so i guess it works out yeah you know what they say they say that you um you marry your father like it's the same kind of thing right like whatever you see you seen in your dad is what you admire in your partner does your dad play pickleball as well I bet you he would if he could. But that is all the crave, and I'm so happy that Maka loves pickleball. That's so funny. Yeah. I don't know what it is. Ever since, I think, maybe a year after the pandemic when it came out, or I don't know when it came out, but 
everybody's doing it. Dude, I'm sort of a geek. Like, but what is what is the origin <laughs> of this pickleball, and why is this a thing? Um, so yeah, I'm interested to know. I know it started in Seattle, um, like in Washington, in one of those little islands, and everyone was like, "What is this pickleball thing?" And now there's people in Hawaii and everywhere that yeah. is engaged in it. And what I find, I can't believe we're talking about pickleball right now, <laughs> but what I have found is that people like things that they can be involved in mm-hmm. and not feel like intimidated Mm -hmm. and I guess pickleball is just one of those things that like the whole family can do Mm -hmm. it's not really about how fit you are or you know those kinds of things so it's very inclusive definitely yeah just like how go play pickleball (laughs) everybody yeah and uh, we love it here because our mindset in Hawaiian culture is kako you know it's inclusive so pickleball is an inclusive sport and like you say you don't have to be the best athlete to have fun at pickleball yeah, yeah. I, I see, I've seen um, parks and like basketball courts being transformed into specific pickleball courts. That's how big it is. <laughs> yes, I mean, I could go on a 10-minute yeah. rant with you right now about the guy that I met at the park that was installing new pickleball courts. So I'm like, what is happening? But hey, if it gets you moving and you're healthy, yes. I'm all about it. And I'm really happy that Maka's doing that. And yeah. he invites me every time he goes. Yeah. So obviously... He thinks I could do it. Maybe I'll try. Yeah, you can. <laughs> but I guess we're not here to talk about pickleball. What? But because you, you've done a lot of other things that doesn't include hitting a ball, a pickleball. <laughs> I don't know what you call it. <laughs> oh, back and forth over a net. Um, and you went to Kamehameha schools. You, you know, you're part of this kind of legendary class. I think you, uh, Anuhea is part of your class. Some other people that... I remember hearing, but I'm just like, oh, I didn't know they're, that they were in Kimie's class. I think I, yes. I did some physical therapy um, when I hurt my knee the other year, and one of your classmates was my physical therapist, and he was talking about you guys. Seriously? I don't, I don't, I don't Let's name. just take a pause <laughs> and talk about how proud I am that it's our 20th reunion oh, wow. this year, and I'm stoked of the leaders that have rose up in our class, and... I don't know. I feel like there's so much importance to going to reunions and just to it's like a mastermind. It's a meeting of your peers Mm -hmm. and to think about what does the next 20 years look like. So I'm excited. 20 years is coming up. I just ran into a classmate Mm -hmm. on this morning blow drying my hair she was there (laughs) so yeah i'm we do have a a great class of leaders i would say yeah i just had my 11th year reunion because we're supposed to have 10 year but it covid uh i didn't i didn't make it to it but i was always thinking like it it's probably kind of intimidating when you're doing going to a high school reunion and like you haven't done much with your life yeah you know in whatever view however you view view success you know and then you got kimia coming up (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Grammy nominated Kimye in your class. <laughs> you know, and you're like, man, what did I do in my life? You, ever you think know about what? That? <laughs> totally. I get it. I get that. And I get that whole like Romeo and Michelle, like mm-hmm. high school reunion, lots of pressure. I mm-hmm. get it. But I think we measure success differently here in Hawaii. And so, like, if you're a farmer or a fisherman, just like I'm attracted to my dad, who like his greatest success is being able to feed our family from the ocean, you know? Mm-hmm. So I think, I think it's, uh, it's not as maybe it's not as um based on like accolades here mm-hmm. because our what how we measure success is different here definitely yeah, yeah. i agree so your time in kamehameha were you always singing or did you were you a little of a late bloomer maybe in your music career um no i was always singing i think and that's the recollection my family has telling me shut up Brady, because <laughs> i sing louder than the radio <laughs> Um, music m- was the way that I expressed the inexpressible was like if I heard I a song and I related to it, it I was really into songwriting actually at a young age I didn't know what that was called back then but I loved songs based on the songwriting I also loved melodies I loved powerhouse melodies from Whitney Houston and Mariah Carey and Stevie Wonder but I also loved Israel Kamaka Viva Ole and all of our legends here Teresa Bright I loved too um so, yeah, I think music always, always was a part of my life. I played ukulele when I was in fourth grade. I got my first ukulele. Then when I was 14 and boarded at Kamehameha Schools, I took my dad's nylon string guitar with me and started writing my own songs. And I used music as therapy, but I was really shy. Mm. Never wanted to share my music with anyone. Um, and eventually my passion outweighed my fear. And now I'm here. Passion outweigh 
my fear. I think if people, a lot of people could have that mindset and, you know, get past that fear, they, people would be doing so many cool things. Yeah. Yeah. So you went to Kamehameha as a freshman. Is that yeah. 14? Mm-hmm. Okay. And were you scared? What I was, was it like leaving? 98 pounds or 80, no, no, 80 something pounds, I think. I was really little. And by the end of my freshman year, when I left there, I had gained like 20 pounds and I grew a bunch. And so it was really like the turning of my mm. life, physically, mentally, being independent. My name, Kimi E, means the independent one in Japanese. Oh, that's beautiful. So it was really like, yes, I have <laughs> arrived. Here I am. I am living on my own. Mm-hmm. I loved that mm-hmm. a lot. And so you didn't have any, I don't know, fears or worries when you were there you're just like i'm free you know what <laughs> I, I, had a like lot fish of, over here. I had a lot of fears not gonna lie and i didn't i wasn't confident in myself uh I, I was super shy intimidated all the things but i was stoked to not be living at my parents house <laughs> and to live on my own with my friends yeah do you have any siblings yes how many three oh, okay and where are you? I'm the youngest. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. yeah. I have a I have a stepsister that's younger than me, but of my growing up brothers, mm-hmm. my brothers were older than me. I was the youngest. And then my stepsister joined our family when we were still pretty young, mm-hmm. and she's younger than me. Okay. So you got a little bit of that um, youngest kid spoiled, spoiledness, right? <laughs> yep. <laughs> awesome. So when you graduated Kamehameha, what did you do after that? I went to the University of San Diego and um, basically just was there to experience life, not even to learn. Even though I was like dean's list, really into education in high school, I don't know what happened. When I went to college, I was like, I just want to discover the world. And I wrote the song Distant Traveler Mm -hmm. just about like learning from the world instead of from books. And that was sort of where my mind, my mindset changed. Um, there and I started traveling a lot more. I met Barrington Levy, a reggae singer. I moved to Jamaica with him and was recording in various studios. I was at Shaggy Studio and um, Sly and Robbie and all these like reggae artists that I loved and grew up with. I lived on my own um, in Clarendon in Adi Country, like way up four hours from the nearest airport. And you're like on dirt roads Mm -hmm. it was crazy but I loved every minute of it I noticed that that's a thing for me I think Mm -hmm. did did you say that with an accent yeah man (laughs) (laughs) is that is that how they say it yeah 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 because I I lived by myself in the in other country and so Mm -hmm. the Pandi road they I just was talking with yeah I hung out with all the young kids Mm -hmm. like I've always, always loved mm-hmm. kids. And, um, yeah, so I was 19, and they were 16-year-olds, like little kids, and we would just hang out on the road, mm. and they were teaching me patois, and it was fun. Oh, that's so cool. Can you give me a shaggy? Shaggy! <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, that's so cool. I've never been there, but I, I love their culture. And, it's of course, we got, we're got we so connected to the music right here. Totally, in yeah. So that that was a big inspiration for you. And was that, like, the catalyst that, you know, set you off on your musical career, like, gave you the confidence? Like, you want to do island music? You know what? I think meeting Barrington Levy in San Diego was the moment I had to choose my passion over my mm-hmm. fear. That was it. I was like, he wanted to take me on tour. I'm like, I can't even sing for five of my friends. Mm. Get it together, Kim. Like, what do you want? So... I did it, went on tour with him, moved to Jamaica, and actually meeting the, them in Jamaica, Jamaicans, they're so confident. And even if they're faking it, they fake it till they make it. Like, mm-hmm. they're so the opposite, I think, of how we're raised to be here in Hawaii, mm-hmm. very ha ha. Um, they're like, what do you mean? Like, what, go on, girl, sing, you know, <laughs> like, sing for us. And Ultimate hype people. <laughs> I was like, oh, my gosh. Or, like, if I'm dancing and I'm, like, all top, they're like, what about your waist? Why in your waist? <laughs> like, it's the total opposite, you know? Yeah. So it was fun because it stretched me to grow and, like, to gain confidence. Mm-hmm. So that was really it for me. Um, and I was still nervous a lot, but I would just go on stage sing my original songs on my mm-hmm. dad's same nylon guitar. I would, like, you know, didn't have a pickup. And 
yeah, it was an amazing time. That was it. That was what it was. Barrington would ask me, like, what do you mean you're nervous? I'm like, I'm so nervous. He's like, what you mean? Like, it it was such a weird thing, concept for him. It was like, you should be confident. Like, you're good. I wouldn't have asked you, so just get up there. Mm -hmm. So it kind of, that was my first step into um, this career was kind of being forced and choosing this career over mm -hmm. my fear. I love that. Do you think because you have a, a good grasp on your voice and the like, control over the way you speak singers in general like you are better at mimicking or like accents because yeah sounds like you you can sound just like them because when i learn languages i learn spanish and i lived in madagascar i learned malagasy i lived there for three years and i don't sound like them i just sound like i'm talking right now like kamaka <laughs> exactly <laughs> but you, you, yes but you just like this at least to me that sounded perfect yeah yeah i i don't know if it was perfect but i think that yeah I've, i'm an audit there's a term for mm -hmm. it auditory learner and so I, I i learn by hearing and yeah it's a form of mimicking and so when i was young i would practice all of mariah carey and whitney Houston's runs like the background vocals and mm -hmm. i could do it you know like just like them in my mind so i thought um but it was that my parents started encouraging me and my family, like, go stand up, turn that bucket. They literally would, like, turn a bucket upside down, make me a stage, and be like, <laughs> sing, I will always love you. That was my jam that I would mm. sing at family parties, and I would do all the runs, and I have a video, and my voice is so high. <laughs> it's funny, but, yeah, I think it has a lot to do with mm. the way that I um, take in information and and then send it out, too. Mm. It's through audio. That makes sense. Through that. It's a good talent to have. I'm. I guess I'm more just like on paper, like I'm good at grammar, but I'm not as good at speaking it. I guess. I mean, like I, I can remember it. You know, I'll get like hundred percent on the the written. grammar report. Yeah, the written side, and then maybe like ninety two percent on the uh, vocal or the um, auditory. Ninety two is still yeah. pretty good, bro. Or, what are or, you or, like? That's like a. <laughs> still an a. Asian F. <laughs> <laughs> if it's not an A plus, it's an F. <laughs> okay, so. That that gave me a little insight on like how you discovered yourself and um, as a musician, how do you think you found yourself, your identity as like a human, as a Hawaiian, as a Portuguese? Because oh, that's a that's that a little hard. harder and something that we're always struggling with, no matter how old you get. Yeah, for sure. Well, music, I gained confidence in music because I found that my I found my voice in music. So mm -hmm. I used music as my therapy and a way to express myself, to to share my deepest, darkest secrets in a way that sounded pretty. And everyone would sing along. Little do they know there was a lot of heartache in that and all those things. Mm -hmm. um, so I kind of used music to mask who I really was for a long time. And, and honestly, it's still a work in progress. I'm still discovering who I am every day. It's never mm -hmm. I don't think I'll ever stop. I yeah. don't want to ever stop discovering who I am. But in recent years, I think I've always been pretty deep and like I like to learn and know things. So I've always been a person of discovery, trying to discover new things, mm -hmm. look at things differently. Um, but in recent years, having kids has really stretched me to to figure out, well, who am I? If I'm asking them to be this kind of a person I have to be that person myself. Mm -hmm. So it, it really caused me to put a mirror. The kids are like a bunch of little mirrors that you're looking mm -hmm. at, right? Yeah. I think they said people in your life are a reflection of you. Yes. Yeah. I, guess, and I guess that makes sense with the whole father and <laughs> fisherman thing. Yeah. All of that. It, there's yeah. all kinds, like seven layers <laughs> deep. Hawaiians know what's up. Like mm -hmm. Hawaiians, you know, Kaumaka Eva helped me name my first daughter, Omea Lani. Um, but she just had such a deep meaning, you know. Honestly, I they were I had like a naming doula, which of course is pretty standard for Hawaiians. Mm -hmm. But um, as a songwriter, I was like, ah, pff, we cannot mess this up. Like yeah. it has to be perfect. So we did all these seven layers deep, and she just really explained to me how Hawaiians think, and just in the name itself, you spend your whole life living into becoming this name and like the meaning of this name and so you have all these layers and layers and layers deep that you're sc scratching for right mm -hmm. and that's what we're doing we spend our lifetime trying to understand who we are and hawaiians understood that we understand cycles and we understand how things worked you know our kupuna did and so it's beautiful to try to 
bring that kupuna ike into the way we live today. And so that's what I'm doing now, trying to be a conscious parent, trying to be a conscious human, trying to figure out who am I? Mm-hmm. You know, that's, all that's the question we're all trying to figure out, right? <laughs> yes, all yeah. of those things. Yeah, and like you said, we're, we're scratching for an identity here. Mm. I think it's a little... You know, on one hand, it's amazing that we have a mix of cultures. You know, the minority is the majority. We're so diverse over here. Yeah. But then, you know, there's the other side of like, okay, then what do I grasp onto? You know, is am I Hawaiian? Am I Filipino? Am I Chinese? Am I, you know, Japanese, whatever. And for for people like us who are mixed, you know, like I'm Hawaiian, Portuguese, Korean, Japanese. But you usually I identify as Hawaiian. And Hawaiian's not even, like, the most blood. I, I have, like, probably, like, less than 15% Hawaiian blood. Yeah. And compared to, like, I don't know, Japanese or Portuguese, which is, like, way bigger. But I never say, like, oh, I'm Portuguese. I'm proud to be Portuguese. <laughs> it's only, the only time I bring up Portuguese is, like, oh, uh, sorry for talking so long. I'm Portuguese. Yeah. You know? So I feel like here in Hawaii, we're only proud to be Hawaiian at times because it's the cool thing to do. Yeah. Well, how do you, and especially coming from like Kamehameha, right? Which for is like sure. You, to, I mean, because we were points. marginalized for so yeah. long and opportunities were stripped of us, our culture was stripped of us. We're living here on this aina, which is Hawaiian. Mm-hmm. It's easy and it's easier to identify as a Hawaiian, although that's not really true either because a lot of Hawaiians don't identify as Hawaiians, right? Mm-hmm. So, um, or don't understand what that means to yeah. be a Hawaiian. And, you know, I said this recently, I did this um, interview and I was at Kamehameha Schools back there talking about, they said it was for like a national publication and so Variety magazine. So they were asking me like what? They were trying to ask me to explain my genre and my type of music. And I just said, you know, my style is a reflection of a vast major, a mm-hmm. vast variety of genres, Hawaiian, um, pop, whatever, reggae, all the things, and who I am. But I know that the music coming out of me is Hawaiian, although it might not be the genre that you would cl- classically mm-hmm. say is Hawaiian, but it is because I'm Hawaiian. So mm-hmm. the things that come out of me are Hawaiian. And I think that the more that we just identify ourselves as not just Hawaiian, but all the other things, and know that, like, oh, all these things coming out of me are Hawaiian, Portuguese, whatever you are, because it, I am those things. Mm-hmm. And I am, it, so it's like this body, this mind, we are a filter of our identity. Everything comes through us and it goes out and it's a reflect, it's reflected in the world. So I've been really questioning this myself <laughs> identity. What who am I? Yes, I'm Hawaiian. I, I understand the concepts and um, what it means to be Hawaiian for me. Everyone has a different definition also. Mm-hmm. And I think whether you're 1%, 100%, you're Hawaiian. Mm-hmm. And that's the beautiful thing because there's not a lot of blood quantum left, mm-hmm. right? So we just need to be proud to be whatever it is that we are, whether we're Hawaiian or not. Mm-hmm. And for me, going... Going home to Portugal and meeting my family in the Açores last summer was life changing. And um, so many times people want to know their, their mo'oku al hao, they want to learn about their Hawaiian side, but they forget, oh yeah, I'm all these other things too. I'm Portuguese, I'm um, some kind of white, I don't even know, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah, yeah. So for me, the journey of identity was not just discovering my Hawaiian roots because there was so much I still didn't know about my mo'oku al hao, but also what about my Portuguese roots? And so when I went there and got to be immersed in the land, land to me, aloha aina, has a lot to do with your identity. It's mm-hmm. everything. The land is you. When I went there and you're talking about Portuguese and how they talk so much, I mean, so let's talk about that because so, my so family was talking <laughs> in the store 20 minutes. And I mean, we were walking everywhere. We're carrying like 60 pounds of stuff. Mm. They walk everywhere and they just stand there and talk for 20 minutes. Plus, I don't know what they're saying because it's all mm-hmm. in Portuguese. By the way, I took Portuguese, but I took Brazilian Portuguese, mm. not Portugal, mm-hmm. Azores, different. They didn't understand what I was saying. So I was like, oh my gosh. It was just a lot of challenges there. But I found that by connecting with the land, I understood so much about who I was and my Mm. identity. It made so much sense to me just by being there in the terroir, as they say in like wine, right? The, uh, The terroir, 
determines how the grape turns out, like in France. And so I feel like we are the same as people. So a Portuguese here in Hawaii is different than a Portuguese from the Azores, even mm-hmm. though we have the same blood. Mm. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. I love it. And I just, the only way I can think of it is with wine. Like wine, mm. uh, the same grape grown here is different than the grape grown there. Um, that has really been a part of this album that I'm working on right now. And like, well, what would a Portuguese from the Azores that lives in Hawaii sound like today? Mm-hmm. Because so often we don't hear a lot of, um, we don't hear a lot of Portuguese music mm-hmm. here in Hawaii. We hear the ukulele, mm-hmm. but we don't hear like what, the representation of Portuguese today. Mm-hmm. So it's been fun doing this blend. It's like a mixed plate of music yeah. and exploring all the different types of genres and how that identifies, how I identify yeah. with that. So it's just another thing you're adding to your plate, how, how people are like, oh man, am I Hawaiian enough? And now you're like, oh, am I Portuguese enough now? The way I feel is <laughs> I'm too much of everything and I want to, almost like zoom in on it and be like, what does that mean Mm -hmm. to be Hawaiian based on my Mm mo'oku auhau? Because Hawaiians were different. Depends where you're from, from the ocean, from the mountain. You know what I mean? So there is no one definition of what is it to be Hawaiian. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's the beautiful thing about being a human, just like Mm -hmm. saying, what is a human? So I just feel like there might be commonality across all identities and then within each group and it's a beautiful thing to celebrate yes. i think that's the bottom line is yeah. let's find out who we are and let's celebrate that yeah and i think it goes back to what you said about land that's how you know i mean just like for example the people from hilo are way cooler than the people from Kona, <laughs> and that's because okay, the, I the shave. Land. <laughs> let's go i shave shave it's ice let's have the war I shave. okay <laughs> <laughs> shaved ice i get it it's <laughs> grammatically correct oh man but i shave <laughs> i shave for life yes uh, so speaking uh, about you know portuguese and you know getting reconnected to your roots i know that you you've been you know practicing the language and you're trying to incorporate it more into your music mm-hmm. um could we possibly hear a song in portuguese are you are you at that point yet you know, I don't want to. I don't want my ancestors to be upset at me. <laughs> so I, I, I do know a song. Well, I'm gonna see if I can remember it. So mm-hmm. we'll try it. But it's a song that I actually, I actually lived here in Hong Kong for a while, and I went to Macau, mm. which is a Portuguese um, territory in the middle of China. Wait, what? Oh, because I've heard of Macau. I didn't know it's Portuguese. Yeah. So it huh. it. Well, it was Portuguese, and then the the Chinese. I don't even know the history. Somebody Google that. Mm-hmm. But there's a song called Macau, and we used to sing it in high school with my friend Kuulani um, from Big Island, from Hilo. Okay, okay, Hilo. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love Hilo. <laughs> I do. But, um, yeah, so this is a song that, sh- that she taught me in high school, and then I went there and walked on cobblestone roads, and then I learned the song. Mm, okay, well, so maybe we'll take a quick break. Uh, maybe a, a sip of our shaka tea. Thinking right. about a little bit. Let's talk about this shaka tea. Yeah, I know you've worked with shaka tea a lot. They're awesome. Mamaki tea. I love them. Um, the thing I love about shaka tea is I became a fan when I was pregnant with my daughter, Omea Lenny, who I had in 2018. When you were saying all those things that I accomplished, mm-hmm. that was... I was drinking shaka tea. I don't know if that means anything. <laughs> but the thing I love about shaka tea is that they're sourcing the mamaki on the big island. So they're providing jobs. Mm-hmm. I love that it's caffeine free. So pregnant girls like I was pregnant for three years in a row mm-hmm. could drink it a yes. lot of it and yeah. be fine with it. Be fine. And yeah, I love I I really do like what they stand for. So I know Bella who used to own it yes. and I'm a big fan of her and mm-hmm. Yeah, so when we support these brands, we do it because we actually like them. Yeah, I love, this is my favorite <laughs> drink on the market. I was What re- flavor you got? I have pineapple mint. Oh, I like yeah. pineapple mint, mango hibiscus. Me too. I grew up drinking mamaki tea because my dad grows it in Hilo. Me too. It, Big yeah. Island, it's a mm-hmm. thing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I love it because I fast. I intermittent fast every day and it's oh. zero calories. So it's the only thing that, I mean, not the only thing, but it's one of the only things I can drink 
and besides so fast. water, it, besides water. If I just want something else, you know. Yeah. So I I love it and uh, yeah, yeah. It's just so, I like so that it's in a can too. Which it's is it's new. They're new cans. Let us really know what you think about their moms. cans. Yes. You know, when you got kids <laughs> running around, you can put your drink anywhere and they won't break the glass. Yes, I love it. Great for the cooler. Yeah. Okay. So and right before we uh, take take a break, I want to give you this shirt from Aloha Revolution, another sponsor for this podcast. Oh wow! I, I'm sure you've seen it before. The upside down Aloha. Yeah, I love that. They're really popular. They have a lot of stickers, so they wanted to gift this to you. Oh, thank you. Yes, I love your shirt, too. I was checking that out. It's ready for Merry Monarch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Exactly. And they got a really cool hat. Wow, And he does awesome things. Go follow them on Instagram. They have, like, really cool reels. He does, like, these little effects. Really soft. Yeah, so let's take a break, and we might be back with a quick song from Kimi. And we're back from a quick shishi break. Thanks to our sponsor, Shaka T, for providing the shishi for us. Thanks, guys. I don't know if I, they want me to say it like that, <laughs> but they made me shishi. Okay. All right. So, which is healthy because it means you're hydrated, exactly, yes. which is what we want in life. Let's be well hydrated. Hydrated with Shaka tea and we're a little revolution. <laughs> All right. So we're back and we got a special treat for everybody because Kimi is going to play a song that she just learned. Yep. <laughs> Still currently learning just like five seconds ago. <laughs> and it's going to be awesome. Uh, what is it called? It's called Macau. And so I lived in Hong Kong and there was this little Portuguese territory island off the off of Hong Kong and it's called Macau. And so this song is written from a Portuguese perspective in Macau. Okay. I don't know. Google it. Let's go. Let's do it. <laughs> I'm just a Portuguese sailor with my eye on a pretty girl. I spent seven years on a whaler, had a good time around the world. When I landed in Macau, she was standing upon the shore. I should have left and left Bill Bio, cause I won't see her anymore. Oh, Macau, oh, Macau, I should have never. Yes, that's the. I can oh, say. Wow, I, Macau. I can say I, I've sung with Kimye. If you count that as singing, just oh Macau. I couldn't after the first one. I could could barely hold it together. So Hui Ohana did did it like that. So you were you know paying some homage to Hui Ohana. I'm sorry if I butchered the song, everybody. Thank you so much for oh, obrigado yes, for for nada. for sharing that with us. That was amazing. Yeah. <laughs> when I'm on the big island of Hawaii, you know, KTA Superstores is my one-stop shop for everything I need. KTA has all of your local favorites, seasonal treats, and complete meal solutions for anything you need. Feeling tired? They got coffee, kau, and kona. Wow, seasoning too. Manufactured right here in Hilo, Hawaii. And for those local boys who don't fish like me, just gotta come here and get your dried aqua chips and say you caught them yourself. Ooh, fried scallops too. And you know no beach cruise is ever complete without the kind, uh, the kind, uh, oh, the, the kind chips. If you can't make it to the store to receive the best customer service from their awesome workers, make sure you check them out online at shop.ktasuperstores.com for their hand-picked favorites available for nationwide shipping. KTS Superstores, where you're someone special every day since 1916. fun thanks for singing with me i mean i'm a grammy nominated 
backup vocalist. Yep. I you're just don't amazing. I don't write it on my uh, resume. <laughs> you can now. <laughs> yes, now I can. <laughs> Everybody saw. <laughs> okay, so let's get into the Be Aloha You Wish to See in the World mm. Instagram questions presented by Shaka T. Okay, first question comes from AA underscore Yana, my good friend Aaron. He asked, New Day really touches the soul in a powerful and gentle way at the same time. What was the inspiration behind this song? That's actually my favorite song. Aww. So I'm happy you asked this question. Thanks. Yeah, I was just thinking about that song today um, because I'm in the studio recording and I'm like, I got to just channel who I was when I wrote that song. And I think what it was, was um, my friend Yoza, who's an amazing um, artist here in Hawaii, was telling me her story about recovery. She was in recovery, right? from alcohol, drugs, whatever, all the stuff. And her, her story was the wildest story I've ever had someone tell me. And so I just started taking notes on my computer, like crazy rapid fire notes. And then I went home and thought about it and was like, I literally, it came to me so quickly. It was one of those songs. Mm -hmm. Like I already knew new day. I already had that idea of I'll start all over. And I was just thinking of the verses and I personally could relate to her because my my dad was in recovery at this point. I think he'd already been um, sober for over 10 years or something. So I saw firsthand my dad change his life and turn it around. Mm -hmm. And so I, this song was for him and for her and for myself and for everyone I could think of that felt like this mm -hmm. will never change. Wh whatever side of it you're on in the recovery journey whether you're the person that they're doing it to or whether it's you yourself and as a as a girl kid growing up I was like he's never going to change he's always going to be this way mm -hmm. and so new day is really an anthem that you can start over no matter how deep and dark you think you are in your hole mm -hmm. there is always a light because my dad was deep dark in a hole in a cave and Yoza was deep dark in the hole and they both came out of it and you know she has two three two or three beautiful cakey and my dad has you know he's doing so many amazing things and he's been sober for over 20 years oh, and congrats. it's life-changing it's 20 years this year because it was when i went to college mm -hmm. that he got sober that's amazing that's a beautiful story i love hearing the monato behind of a song the story behind of behind a song um that song really sticks with me because that's like that's the song i would always listen to when i would travel in madagascar it was always the first song I played. So <laughs> the roads are super bad in Madagascar. Less than 11% of the roads are paved. And I live four hours from the capital. So wow. that's like the minimum length ride for me. So I'd always look out the window, look at the rice field, the mountains, the, just, just the scenery. And I'd always play New Day. And like that, like I was like, it just starts off. And then like the melodies of the song, like all the, the lyrics, everything just hits you so hard and i loved it so that's all that's one of the reasons i'm well, a huge fan you know that part i'm just gonna <laughs> pull this thing out yes. um, all when it goes, coming true. and i know it's time because i hear the song um song birds humming and i know it's time because i can't stop my that right there to me was the moment when i realized where she realized where my dad realized like oh my god when people say, don't worry, you always have tomorrow, mm -hmm. that to me was the moment where it was like, I hear it coming. So that's like the, you're in Madagascar mm -hmm. and the mountains are all yeah, around yeah. you and you're like, oh my God, hey, everybody clap like with me. And you're like by yourself <laughs> in a concert. I start alone. <laughs> Start a love a new day, a new day. Yeah. I start a love, a, I start a love a new day, a new day, a new day. That's that was beautiful. I, I, I love the middle part too, where you're like, um, I think you said something about going to a jungle or took a bubble bath and. <laughs> I can't remember. I that took exact. a dive. I took a dive into the deep, deep blue sea. Blue sea yeah. and swam so as fast, fast as my broken yeah. heart could carry me. 
There was a storm. There was a storm. Sorry. Yeah, there was a war. There was a war. I left behind the tears. I cried on the desert pirate shore. Yep. And yeah. this part, this the next oh, part I really I didn't catch my breath. Yeah. I had nowhere to land. Yeah, this part. Both just me and Mama Shetty. She was all that I had. <laughs> yeah. I love Wait, that part. so you were imagining because you were in Madagascar yeah, so listening this... to this song, I was for sure in the jungle with a machete yeah. chopping down just trees. Just because of that part. Yeah. <laughs> and then this is because you're like, you know, de- de- desert, desert island, pirate like shore. pirate shore. Like, yeah. All of it was just like this imagery in my head. And That's like cool. it was just the, the perfect song for that journey of my life. So, yeah. That's th- that's the best thing about music. Mm-hmm. And then every time I hear the song, it takes me to that place. Wow. That, so that's why I love it. So hearing that is like a dream come true. So you just made my life right there. Mahalo. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, great, it. great question, Aaron. I love great it. Great question. Next question comes from someone you might know, Tiara Gomes. Oh, yes. I know she, her. <laughs> she wants to know, what's the most challenging thing you faced in your career? <sighs> Myself. The most challenging thing I've faced in my career is my own <laughs> self. Getting in the way, stopping myself, not believing in myself, not thinking I'm good enough, maybe thinking I was too good in some areas. You know, it's just like not um, allowing myself to be who I was in that moment of time mm-hmm. because I was always chasing who I wanted to be next. I'm, I want to be this artist, this artist. Like, but who are you today and how do you reflect on that through your music so I think that really really truly was my biggest challenge even with my team or like I always made I always got in my own way mm-hmm. for sure and once I I've trusted the process trusted that the universe got my back trusted that um, I have a good team I could let go of control and I mm-hmm. think control is what we all want well for sure for me I grew up in chaos and so I use control to feel safe. Mm-hmm. And once I let that go, I'm still working on it, but I'm <laughs> way further than I was before kids. Kids changes everything. You're like, you can't have control over everything mm-hmm. once you have kids. But that's really what saved me was letting go and getting myself out of the way. That Love was it. my biggest challenge. Great answer. And since you just brought up your kids, her follow up question is, how do you balance your career with your personal life and being a mom of three? I'm so happy you asked me this, (laughs) Tiara. I'm so happy you asked me this. (laughs) You know what? I just the other day was reflecting on my life during the pandemic with three kids. And I think what happened was I was looking at the one crib I have left. But there was a time when I had three cribs in my house, you guys. I had three babies under three years old. It was the gnarliest time of my life. And I can't, I just thought of it with Maka. Like, what were we thinking? He's like, well, I don't know. People just say like, you don't know it until you're through it. And then you're like, whoa, (laughs) that was really crazy. And it was all during the pandemic. It was insane. I don't know what, how, what. (laughs) I can give you some tips and tools, but the the reality is, is like, holy smokes, it is super hard. But it is way more rewarding Mm -hmm. when you get through that challenge, the rewards are higher. And actually when you were saying my, by my introduction, it kind of, I like my life flashed before my eyes, what you were saying in 2018, she won these three different things. Um, and I had just had my baby. Mm. I had Omea Lenny that same year. And so it's funny how your biggest challenge becomes your greatest mm. reward, you know? And and it was true. All of these accolades and all of these things came during the busiest, challengingest times of my life. The Grammy nom, I had two kids and I was pregnant. Like, it, it was so many things happening. And, um, yeah, it's it's like passion over fear. It's... What are you going to do with this challenge and how do you um, succeed? So I think my passion has been strong, is always strong. My purpose, Mm -hmm. I really do believe in a purpose-driven life. And that's what pushes me forward through the challenges. Um, But now some like things you can actually use today. If you're a parent (laughs) that is running businesses and stuff, I would say schedules. Like Mm. I was, I'm an artist. I was never like into scheduling, but the more structured I made my home, like a business, the easier it was to be able to have a career, to be able to plan ahead, look ahead. Um, That's one tool that you can use is like get a, 
just structure your life. And what I mean by that is like, you can even look on Google, like what's the perfect, you can, there's Google for everything, right? Mm -hmm. So you can look for these tools on like different structures that you can build for your life so that it's easier. One thing I'll tell you, one thing we do is we were going insane, right? Like I said, we had three cribs. It was gnarly during the pandemic and I was in therapy. First of all, therapy is great. If you can do it, do it. Even when you're in good Mm -hmm. spirits it's a good way to have someone else that you don't have to burden or you know just to have another person to talk to that's licensed and knows what they're talking about um so i've been going to therapy since the pandemic Mm. probably two years now um every at least once a month but she told us why don't you guys get a sleep trainer so number one thing if you're gonna have kids sleep train them because a, a tired kid is makes you tired and it's mm-hmm. miserable so sleep training then the next thing we did was we took turns on having nights and mornings off why mm. were we both waking up dying over here when we could take turns where someone could have a chance to sleep and mm. someone has a chance to wake up so that has really been our saving grace we still do it we pick nights that we're going to make dinner we take turns with the responsibilities of running a family so that the other person gets a break. And like we mentioned at the beginning, pickleball. <laughs> Maka's, it's my night tonight. Yeah. So I'm making dinner. I make sure that everything's taken care of in our structured, planned out family. And he gets to have pickleball, you know? So it's Love like, it, it allows for us to have freedom, actually. Mm-hmm. The more structure you have, the more freedom. So Tiara is one of my mentees, too. And um, I think it's cool that she's we've been mentoring her at Haku Collective for like six years. And I created all these programs because it's the program I wish I had when Mm -hmm. I was young, you know, and I hope I can just fast forward them through all the problems and challenges I went through. And one of the things that she's learned from us is about having a calendar and, you know, just using Mm -hmm. your phone calendar to help keep you on track. And the other thing is emails making sure she's responding to emails and basically like becoming her own boss, being Mm -hmm. her leader of her business. She's an amazing artist. I'm so excited about a project that we worked on with Hawaiian airlines. That's coming out this month in April. I don't know if I was supposed to say the month. No. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Are we putting this out soon? Okay. It's going to be out in April. (laughs) Okay, great. (laughs) So yeah, there's a new in-flight thing, but you know, Tiara is just the next gen and I'm stoked that we got to work together at Haku and you know, She's definitely a family mom person. I see her being a mom. And um, so any artists or, or entrepreneurs that are looking to have a family and still run a business, that's how you do it. You know, you, you're you really clear and upfront about expectations with your partner and your family. Um, I'm running a full system that I use in my business now at home where we talk about our family values, our mission. But the more clear we are about house rules and all these things mm-hmm. that seem so crazy at first it just allows them freedom it's like a bridge with guardrails mm. so they can run freely across this big bridge but they know they have they're safe yeah, yeah. and that's it that allows us to have our freedom awesome i also thought about um, when you go bowling and they got the little bumpers on the side <laughs> i still use those yeah. <laughs> that, yeah, that's where awesome. i'm at pickleball <laughs> no bowling no that's awesome i like because um yeah, I, I also agree on the, the therapy and, you know, keeping yourself mentally, physically healthy, all of that. And um, what I like to think of like therapy, like if you don't physically go to therapy and you're talking with somebody, you can do things that are therapeutic. Absolutely. Like for me, my therapy is surfing, playing oh, sports, yes. soccer, because like I, I get to just like release all of my stresses, you know, and not be on my phone. Like, that's, like, the best therapy for me. Or, you know, even just, like, you get to talk to people, random people in the water or whatever and just talk about life and maybe not about work all the time. So, like, whatever it is, find your therapy. Like, for whether sure. that's, you know, going to somebody or, like, not even, like, your your spouse or your partner, like, a friend. You know, there's some for things that you, you, know, you can't talk, you don't want to talk to your partner about or, you know. Like, I would love to talk about fantasy football with Sierra all the time, but she just doesn't pay attention to me. You know, so I need to find my people, build my community. Absolutely. And that's all we want. We all want to be a part of a community. Mm-hmm. I ended up joining fantasy football just so I could whoop Maka's you-know-what. And guess oh. what? I won three times what? because I am up. I don't know why, but I'm just, I just had to beat him. I was like, I need to beat him. 
You so. did. I just became an even bigger fan. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this was this was before uh, on the cusp of kids, so mm-hmm. it's been a while. But yeah, I, I'm very competitive oh, with him. Nice. We're competitive. Yeah, I, I started a five hundred dollar fantasy football league. We've only been going for two years, but um, I've got close. I got second place and third place. So wow. Hopefully, first place the next year. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah. Great question, Tiara. Check her out because she's an upcoming artist, like very talented. She's so great. Yeah. And she's Portuguese Hawaiian too, mm-hmm. just saying. Yeah, yeah. And That's she's from Waimanalo. <laughs> <laughs> Nalo. I went to school with a lot of them. Um, because I, I moved to Kaiser my senior year, so I went to school with a lot of Nalo boys. Oh, yeah. But then the, the, I just remember the, they got the Nalo boy tattoo. Yeah. Like you know, I, my <laughs> one of my dreams is to get my dad's house back in Waimanalo mm-hmm. that they, his family sold. But my dad is a total Nalo boy. But in the best sense of the word, like, Nalo boys just, there's something special about them. And I just see it in my dad. And he... He's still the same as when he was young, you know, and he's carried that ocean lifestyle throughout his life. And I just it's sad, right, that Hawaiians don't own more land and they don't own Hawaii. Or they got to buy back their land. <laughs> that's where we're at. Yeah. But I'm like all about it. Like if if I only have one goal, it's going to be to to have land. Awesome. And every Hawaiian should have that goal yeah. because Hawaiians need to own Hawaii. That's, yeah, that's what I'm working on. Let's do yeah, it, guys. Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, next question comes from Island Kitty, Island underscore Kitty. This person wants to know any trauma associated with your childhood. Yeah, I mean, I think I mentioned it about my um, dad and his his road to recovery. And, you know, like like I said, we I grew up in chaos. I literally went to uh, at least 10 elementary schools when I was oh. growing up, and I moved around a lot. I felt like I had no say. I felt like my voice didn't matter. They would just be like, be quiet and just do what we say. You know, Mm -hmm. And I lived with different family members as my parents went through their divorce and like a lot of um, just chaos. I don't even know. You know, I blamed my parents. I judged them until recently, more recently, you know, Um, and it took a lot for me to forgive them. But when you become your own parent and you're like, I get it. You get it. Everyone mm-hmm. always says that, but like, I'm not kidding. It's so true. You're like, oh, they weren't that bad. Or like, ah, oh, it was, it was mm-hmm. hard, yeah. you know? So just having grace for people and understanding that your parents did what they did the best they could, maybe not the best they could, but there's nothing that you can do about it. Mm-hmm. And a lot of our trauma, it's all based on childhood trauma, the way that we mm-hmm. are today and the stuff we hold on to. And so it's really about loving ourselves, being confident with ourselves, forgiving them and ourselves. Um, I've definitely been doing a lot of that work. And like I said, music was always what I used as my form of therapy. And actually it still is now. Mm-hmm. Um, and I love podcasts too. I love listening to other people's stories and to find out how I can relate so I guess is the question, like, how did I get through it? Maybe. Uh, no, but you can tell us how. Yeah, because I think, like, I think we've all been through something mm-hmm. in our lives, right, that's traumatic. Um, and how do we get through it? And I think the first thing to know, like you said, find your community, but it's like you're not alone. Mm-hmm. There's definitely somebody else who knows what you're feeling. You know, we recently, in 2020, lost our niece, and that was the most tragic thing that ever happened in our family to lose a Mm six-year-old it was the worst and we all thought nobody can understand this but so many people do and there's so many groups so I think to the point of like when you're dealing with trauma and how to get through it it's actually easier to get through with someone else especially that someone that's been through it Mm -hmm. or helping someone else that's been through it, like being there to talk to someone else that's going through it. And I think that's, that's what therapy is for me. That's what like, there's different groups and different things, but that's how you get through. To me, the trauma is serving others and, and talking story with others and allowing yourself to be vulnerable so that you can forgive, move on, love yourself, love your family, and then think about what you want for your future. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just empathy. That's 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 what it's about. And, um, you know, putting some perspective on the parent stuff, like when I first became grateful for my parents, when I was back from college and she, my mom asked me to pick up my little brother from school, take him to paddling practice. Mm-hmm. 
and then pick them up. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, it's such an inconvenience. Yeah. And I'm just on summer break. And then I did. I'm like, wow, my mom had to do this while raising five kids, while going back to school for RN license and cooking breakfast, all this, picking up five kids from sports, taking them everywhere. And she just asked me to pick up my brother from sports and I, I'm complaining. And like l- yes. people who are listening to this, you are you might be the age, if you don't have any kids, you might be the age your parents were when they had you. Yes. And think about what you would do if you had a kid right now. Cause I think that I'm like my I think my mom was maybe twenty seven when she had a kid and I'm twenty nine. I, I, I just turned thirty. I just turned thirty. Um so I'm just like I can't even imagine having a kid at 30 or even knowing what to do. And she was three years younger. And, you know, it's just it gives you that perspective like, oh, they're really just figuring it out as they go. Just like if I had a kid right now, I would have to figure it out as I go. Yes. (laughs) And it's it's a beautiful thing. But that's what I was saying is like sometimes the, the kids are the most challenging, right? Because you have to always be on. You can't call in sick. It's like. 24 Mm 7 and you lose your freedom in some ways but it's the most rewarding and you gain freedom in new ways Mm -hmm. and it's the biggest reward because it's such a challenge for sure and to just to to talk about our parents we didn't they didn't have ipads they didn't have cell phones so it was a lot tougher back then to figure out yeah maps (laughs) like they're like with a map trying to figure out where what's where they're taking you for this park and gotta call auntie who tells you you know what i mean like it was it was a lot it's a lot um more streamlined today and it's easier to be like you know i lived in haula for the, with my first two kids and that was an hour drive both ways and mm-hmm. so i had ipads set up and all <laughs> kinds of things but i always found like life hacks yeah you know i'm like i'm that kind of person like what's a life hack for oh, this save it for the end because we have that's the last question oh. of the podcast life hacks okay <laughs> okay yeah and it's funny uh, it's a, a generational thing too i don't know if anybody ever notices is when your parents are like oh how do you get here it's like oh go on kino ole take a left on kanoe lehua go up moholi or like you know, say so, uh, Mauna Loa, like, oh, yeah, go on Le- Luna Lilo Home Road, take a left at, you know, Aoloa Street, whatever. And that's, and for us, it's like, oh, it's, um, take a left right by that 7-Eleven, and it's across from that church with the pointy tip. <laughs> that's how we would give directions these days. But because they didn't have maps, maps they had to know no, all the street names. Know every single yeah. name. Absolutely. <laughs> yes. That's, that's so <laughs> true. That's my grandparents still to this day. Yep. And they're giving me directions. I'm like, I don't actually need directions. And the best part is when you have to stay on the phone for like <laughs> 10 about, minutes with your auntie or your grandma. That. And they're like, okay, so what you want to do? I'm like, okay. But I'm like, I didn't listen to any of that. I'm just going to put it in my Google Maps, yeah. my map, and I'm good. Like, I don't, That's which so is funny. kind of the sad thing about this whole AI mm. turn of the set, whatever we're going mm. through right now. Because it's like. Now we don't even have to know street names or where we're going. We, <laughs> we literally don't. Yeah. So what does that mean for our kids if we're here now? It's what what it's gonna will wild. happen if technology goes away is the real question. If there's a zombie apocalypse or something. Who knows? Okay, next question comes from Baba Kalei. This person wants to know, or this person says, ask her what MPK means, referring to the Anuhe interview question. <laughs> So uh, oh Anuha was on our podcast yes. last year, and she she mentioned this acronym. Yes, MPKs, <laughs> Maysmik Plush Koof, Maysmik Plush Koof, M A Y. Who knows? <laughs> but this is basically just a testament to our imaginations and how creative and weird we were in high school. Me and Anuha were best friends, along with two of our other friends, and we just made a crew name called Mace McPlush Coof or MPKs and literally how we found the name is MPK was spray painted on a wall and then we came up with what that meant what that acronym meant just just being what does it silly mean? <laughs> Mace McPlush Coof <laughs> <laughs> yeah, guys, exactly. Maka olalo Hawaii, maka he paleku kuhu. Beautiful. <laughs> All right, well, we'll leave it at that. <laughs> I love it. I love it. If you know, you know. Yeah, yeah. I, Y, K, 
Why K? <laughs> I don't know. Good question. <laughs> That's funny. And um, a bunch of people asked. I didn't write anybody um, specifically. A bunch of people asked, um, did, will, will you ever collaborate on a song with Anuhe? Of course. We did already. Um, Haters, she was on that song with mm-hmm. me. That was a bunch of people, though. Yeah, that was yeah. a bunch. So just her and I. And then um, on Hawaiian Lullaby, I'm singing all the backgrounds for her True Colors song, and we did that together. But yeah, for sure. We just wrote a song. Um, I'm doing this Naleo program. I don't think we talked about it yet, but um, with Haku Collective, she was a mentor. And so while we were mentoring these kids on how to songwrite and things, these up and coming artists, we ended up writing, we did the assignment too. And so mm. we wrote a song with Isaac and it was oh, so cool. much fun to go back into, we were, we wrote it at Kamehameha schools. We were on campus and I was holding my first Naleo program this year. And so it was like full nostalgia on her hand. I could see our dorm right there. <laughs> we're standing there like writing a song in the stairwell with our guitar. And it just really was reminiscent. So she said it's going to go on her next album. So oh, stay tuned. <laughs> yeah, coming up. Awesome. Uh, and last question comes from Jerry underscore Salamante. This person wants to know, do you run a management company? What artists are under your tuliage? I think that's a tuliage. What does that mean? Tutelage? 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 I think that's how you say it. <laughs> Let us know uh, if we're saying it correctly. Let's Tutelage. Google that. Tutelage. I, I, I think that's just like under your your arm, like mentoring or... I, mean, I have Google. I have, yeah, we come have on, Google. Guys. We have Google. Well, I literally you look have it a up, laptop on Okay, here. yeah. Look that up. Be- <laughs> Protection or authority over someone. Protection or Ooh, I love that. Authority Tut- under some guardianship. Wow. Yeah. Tut- how, Thank how do you. Say you. It? Like, what is this person's name? Tutelage. 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 Who asked this question? Uh, Jerry Salamante. Well, thanks for teaching us this new word. <laughs> tutelage. Tutelage. <laughs> tutelage. Under my tutelage. <laughs> um, I like the meaning, though, like uh, guardianship protection. Mm-hmm. That's nice because I think so, so many times artists, artists, any human, like going into a new line of work or business, they feel like so vulnerable and so I don't have all the answers. I can't do everything for them. But as much as I can help, I want to help because I know what it felt like. And it took me years to even get my first Nahoku nomination. Mm-hmm. And it was a long, crazy, windy road. So Haku Collective is a company I started in 2016. It's by artists, for artists, um, where we do management booking, licensing, record label. It was kind of like the all-in-one stop shop Mm -hmm. because it was all the things I needed for myself. And so I had Kimmy and Minor Music. That was the first company I started, and it was all the things I needed for myself. Then I started Haku because I realized I want to offer this to other artists. So it started like that. Then we turned it into also, I was already mentoring artists like Kalani Pea that was Mm -hmm. trying to become, um, get into the recording academy and the grammys all those things so i was helping his husband who was my childhood friend figure those things out for hours and hours and hours on the phone like i would spend half my night talking to him on the phone about this is how you set this up Mm -hmm. now you're gonna go and ask cap and write everything that i had learned i was sharing so haku collective was really just this place a, a name to call this place where i was already mentoring and offering support where I could for mm. my friends. And community. then the mentors, sh- yes, mm-hmm. because for me, service is huge. Community is a huge pillar of mine. Collaboration is huge. Mm. So that's what Haku is. And the mentorship thing just was a natural way that I wanted to serve my community. So I offer free. I've never charged, always been free. Um, these c- classes on songwriting workshops, and I was just for a one-off weekend, so not, like, intensive for long periods of time. And I don't—the reason why I don't pay is because I believe, you know, well, I wouldn't have been able to afford it as a kid. So I wanted to make sure that I can um, provide this service to the little me's out mm-hmm. there. Yeah. So that was important. And then also just, you know, kupuna ike. It's, again, like, these were things that I was mentored from Fiji and Charles Brotman and all of my mentors that mentored me, and that was free. Mm-hmm. So now I pass it on free. We know nothing is free, but it's just covered costs by someone else. So I'm so grateful to all of the sponsors and the supporters who have really poured in to make this program free. 
for the kids mm-hmm. so that they can really get to know each other. That's the real mm. value in this. They learn from us mentors, but there's only so much they're going to learn from us in that time. But what they start is a little cohort. Mm-hmm. Cohort. C-O-H-O-R-T. Mm-hmm. Cohort <laughs> means... Group? Group of... <laughs> class? A class, yeah. <laughs> basically. So they, mm-hmm. they come together, who we up, and then they're the next generation. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. that's them. And it's that's cool the beautiful that. thing mm-hmm. is that they can k- keep going and carrying it on. So okay. that's been the joy and the most amazing thing about the work I do at Haku nice. is the give back. Yeah. And do you guys do some sort of like, you know how they got the iTunes agreement and you have to read a super long page and you just click agree, you don't read it. So like actually they're just agreeing, but you you just, they just signed their life away to you. Like you have all the licensings right to all music in the future for the next 10 years. I'm so, so glad that, you asked that question that because I was that that's person. A good, that's a good idea if you didn't do it. I was that person like, here, let me just sign away all my life, all my rights. Heck no. But only because we're by artists for artists. That's like the thing is like, well, what's the deal I would sign? So Mm -hmm. everything is through that lens. I understand this is how it works. This is how it works. But what would I do? We understand what the mold is and we figure out what mold parts of the mold we want to break. Right. And when it comes to me, just like land. IP is like their land. It's their creative intellect and it's um, Fiji. I always quote it, but it's so good. He said the music industry has nothing to do with music and everything to do with rights. And as mm. soon as you understand that your music is is the IP that every, the record label is trying to own, everyone's trying to own it, but you need to own that. You can lease it out. You can rent it out, but you should always own that legacy. Mm. That's good. Yeah. Intellectual par- property, right? Mm. So it is. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. So yeah, that's, that's what advice. we encourage there. That's the kind of deals that we draw up with our artists with anything that we're doing. It's really a fair thing where we are encouraging legacy. Mm. Awesome. Just heads up if anybody sends me an agreement, I will not read it. I will just <laughs> click agree. So just a little yeah, life hack for me. Like <laughs> that's not good. Don't do that. I'm sticking with it. Yeah. I will not read it. Disagree. <laughs> right, disagree. Everybody. Disagree. Ju- just agree. Just agree. Disagree. <laughs> disagree. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Mahalo, everybody, for the Instagram questions. And make sure you leave some for our next guest. And maybe your question will make it on the podcast. And don't forget to be the aloha you wish to see in the world, just like Shakati. All right. So we're coming to the back end of the podcast. And I know you're going to be going to Hilo to play in the Merry Monarch, which is the biggest event in Hilo. Probably, you know, one of the things that make Hilo greater than Kona. Um, (laughs) Hey, I'm not just saying this. It's written by our producers. They told me I have to say this on podcasts. I am unifying Hawaii (laughs) Island. There is no Hilo versus Kona in my world. Okay, say that to Kealake every time they beat us in soccer, okay? (laughs) <laughs> oh, this is running deep, like childhood trauma. Childhood trauma, yes. yes because figured. every time we were the older ones, <laughs> we'd always win the Kirk Banks tournament. But every time the Kiala Kehe boys was the older in that like age group, then they would win. Mm. So I know it's just this competition, and yeah. you know, very healthy football. Yeah, it's definitely. Good. I still, um, you know, have this, some disdain for John Ursua. You know, the football player. Yeah. Because he played for Calica and he would just, it was so hard to tackle him. Yeah. So even though I had him on my podcast, like, I, I still hate that Did guy. Did you try to tackle him after the I, show? I missed. He oh broke my ankles, gosh. just like the good old days. <laughs> 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 All right. So I just want to know what you're looking forward to for Mary Monarch. And tell us where you're going to be. Oh, okay. We're going to be at SCP, which mm-hmm. is Social Community Planet, the old Hilo so, Seaside. So, so Community Planet. So yes, Community so Planet. Community Sorry. Planet, yeah. But you can so be social community. there. Socially yeah. <laughs> soul community plan, yes. So we're so stoked that Haku Collective has partnered with them to provide uh, the music, and we're going to have the, some of the mentees there performing the up and coming artists. And then we'll have Kalani Pea celebrating mm-hmm. his birthday on Thursday. Friday, I'll be there. Dylan Pakele, um, Vehi Le. We're going to have Paula Funga on Saturday. This is all pod, past podcast guests right here. Yeah. <laughs> and Kama Lenny, she's amazing too. Hilo's own. Do you know Kama? Oh, okay. I was thinking Kama Dung because you, no, you Kama, said Dylan. Kama, Kama the Lenny. singer. Okay. Yes. Um, so a lot of amazing artists. There's going to be crafts, all kinds of amazing things. Manu Heli will have their Oof. shop there. It's it's going to be dope. Yeah. So and our girl Bree is amazing, amazing there. She's the manager there. Yes. And we went to Oprah right before the world closed. I remember that. that I, was me- I remember the, seeing all the videos. Is you, Bree, McKenna, McKenna, 
Passion, Wendy, yes. and, and Kailua, and then got a lay to her or something. Yep. Right? Oh yes. yes, that was the power of intention. Yeah. <laughs> I believe that 100 percent threw her my lay, and I told them on camera, "I'm going to give this lay to Oprah," mm-hmm. and it was Plumeria because mm-hmm. we wanted a good smelling lay, not an orchid. Okay. Mm-hmm. Ever, <laughs> ever. So, anyways, yeah, that was that was fun. But Bree is great, and she's supporting everything through her Rise Hawaii Foundation, mm-hmm. and she's just there's just so many amazing. Nonprofits here in Hawaii that are community minded, giving back to the youth mm-hmm. and things like that. So we're looking forward to that. Of course, Mary Monarch, we're gonna have hula, hula for the gods. Mm-hmm. My kids are coming for the first time, oh, so they awesome. get to experience this. Uh, my daughter's really into hula, so I think for sure hula, shopping, music, mm-hmm. food, it's craft fairs, craft, craft fairs, fairs for days, for days. Yeah, yes. you gotta go to uh, Kula Shave Ice. Have you been there? Mm. No. Kula Shave Ice. The, the only thing I don't like about them is it's that it's Shave Ice, not Ice Shave. But I love them. Kona, again. They're, they're the best. They actually started, um, the owner was born in Kona. In, uh, um, makes sense. Luke, yeah. And Tiffany, they're the owner's uh, best Shave Ice ever. They have. Ooh, they actually have okay. a, a, Kula a Shave spot. Ice. Yeah, they have a spot in uh, I'll have to check on the North Shore, out. but their main one is in Hilo. Okay. They're on Hawaii Verse, so if you mention Hawaii Verse, you get a dollar off. Oh. Best well, when ice. I have off yeah. my kids and my family, <laughs> no, that's six dollars. Like, yes. Yeah. This is this is not like one of those suggestions. Like, oh yeah, somebody sa- tells you and then you forget about it. But like, go. Actually, okay. Go. So Kula Shave Kula Ice. Shave where ice. else? Uh, I mean, for me, I like can't Blaine's miss. Dri- I mean, cannot miss it. I'm a Blaine's driving guy, but that's not Blaine's at the driving. top. That yeah, that's right to, next to me. That doesn't that's have to fine. be on people's top of the list. Um, Moon and Turtle. I we just oh, ate yeah, there Turtles, recently. Yum. That place is so ono. Um. Po- um, poke market, best poke. Ooh. So if poke you're market. craving some poke, okay. poke market. Um, yeah. Oh, bite the eye. Have you been to bite the eye? No. It's a food truck. They're usually in the Prince Cleo Plaza mm. parking lot, but they've been in the Maku'u market or somewhere in Cal. Um, but Korean ahi katsu or something like oh that. Oh my god, that it's sounds good. So, no. Bite the eye. Bite the Bite eye. Bite the eye. Okay. Yeah, I'll yeah I'll send it to you. If I see you at um, SCP, I'll just bring some. Okay. <laughs> I'll Amazing. bring some for Bree oh, and I'm everybody. I'm also gonna do uh, the Hawaii designer fashion show. So they're doing like all the designers, including um, Simply Sisters. So oh, Lex Breezy's Auntie, mom, yeah. Auntie uh, Auntie Regina, and then. Uh, Yari and Alohi Vai and like all these amazing Hawaii Island designers. That's uh, Tuesday, Ooh. April 11th. So Paula and I are playing their acoustic set um, at night, and there's gonna have a fashion show and oh, all that's the so things. Oh, cool. We were planning to go on the 12th, so we might have to change our flights. Yeah, yeah. come up a day early. Yeah, that's awesome. It's gonna be epic. Okay, cool. All right, so there's nothing like Mary Monarch. <laughs> it really isn't. Seriously. Yeah, seriously, it's just the best. The, the environment, the energy, everything's just so festive. Yeah. Jordan, you gotta come too. We gotta do some podcast episodes over there. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Maybe we'll do a live one from SCP. I've been talking to Bree about yeah, something like that. Yeah, the lounge there is sick. Yeah, yeah. So that'd be cool to have a live audience. Maybe just do a little panel. Yeah, I don't know. Stay tuned. Okay, if you didn't pursue music as a career, what do you think you'd be doing? Cooking, something to do with food. <laughs> I'm really into food. I like food a lot. Like, well, I'm what a is foodie. your go-to like meal to cook for your family? Well, it used to be bulf bourguignon, <laughs> which is like <laughs> French stew, um, chicken divine. But once I had a bunch of kids, I stopped with the bouffe bourguignon because it's like a long, long mm-hmm. process. So quick things: shoyu chicken, um, chicken divine is my grandma's like casserole thing, but it's mm-hmm. amazing. It has like creamy garlic mushroom sauce with cheese and like panko topping, so it's crunchy on the top, then like soft inside with chicken and broccoli. It's really good. Um, I don't know. My list goes on and on. <laughs> I love food, though. And I, I, I honestly, you know, becoming a mom was difficult. Running b- all these businesses, being a mom, it was hard. And I lost a lot of myself. And then the pandemic hit. We cooked a lot. But then it was too hard. Yeah. So it was a lot of back and forth. But now we're sort of getting back into a stride. Mm-hmm. And I think, you know, my therapist said it, too. It's like our life with kids. It kind of you go in a U curve where it goes mm-hmm. really low. But then you can see it start to come up again. And that's mm-hmm. where we're at i only have one baby in diapers now i only have one crib so there's a little bit more time to do the Mm -hmm. things i enjoy including my artistry but food is definitely up there awesome love that okay speaking about that u curve 
What do you think was the lowest point in your career? What am I defining that by? However you want. Like, the hardest, the, I don't know, saddest, the, I don't know. Well, I guess I would say these past years, like, externally it looks great and it's awesome and it, it was awesome because I really got to serve everyone else but for me personally with my own career I really put myself on the back burner and you know I you can't pour from an empty cup mm -hmm. and so I just I've, saw you share that I just shared that <laughs> love it I have to constantly fill myself mm -hmm. because you ha it's a daily process so um mom guilt's a thing like being a leader in my company and like trying to structure a company mm. i have multiple companies it's just a lot and so it it felt really low not like i was depressed or anything but just like burnt out mm. i just did this amazing christmas island tour it was nuts and i had kids i got home on christmas eve i was really 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 burnt out and i'm just coming out of that dark haze of like I don't want to get up I don't want to work um I want to be an artist again and so mm -hmm. I would say now I'm coming out into this area where I'm thinking about myself as an artist and like allowing myself to have time to go to the studio requiring that I have mm -hmm. time in my company to do creative things that started all of this mm -hmm. you know so yeah I would say that and like just having all these children, it just really, everyone asked me, how do you do it? And I didn't see it because I was in the middle of it. But now that I'm coming out of it, I'm like, whoa, that was the hardest time of my life ever was during the pandemic, mm -hmm. having three kids under three. That was the roughest part of my whole journey so mm -hmm. far with trying to have a career and stuff and a lot of external great things happen mm -hmm. a lot of awards and all those things but you know there's internal stuff happening and so that's why I've been doing so much work mm -hmm. internally trying to figure out how to get through that mm -hmm. you yeah, and come yeah. back up the hard and times. then it's kind of yeah. like a skating ramp. Yeah, you're like, whoa. It's like the shaka at the water park. <laughs> that shaka where it goes like this. Exactly. You're like, wait, I thought I was over this. So I don't, you know, I know it's a daily practice. Mm -hmm. It takes a lot, but yeah, yeah, working through it. But then, like you said, there's times in life where it's so challenging and you're like, how the heck am I going to get out of it? But you get out of it. And then you're like, wow, I can't believe I did that. You know, with something as simple as just, like, starting to learn ukulele or playing guitar. Like, oh, my gosh, I'm seeing Kimmy's finger go all back and forth on this ukulele. How am I ever going to do that? And then eventually you get there. Like, wow, I'm doing it. Yeah. So it's, it's just amazing to see what we're capable of if we just keep going. If we don't give Absolutely. up. Absolutely. Yeah. And also, like, for those moms out there, like you know just entrepreneurs maybe like maybe your work is your baby i would just encourage you to always make sure you're thinking about yourself too and like what is your mm -hmm. purpose or your end game or your goal for yourself and not get lost in like all of the things the mm -hmm. other things like responsibilities and things that can cloud your big vision <laughs> awesome yeah. Uh, speaking of, you know, advice and, you know, on the same topic, what advice would you give to the youth who may want to pursue a career in singing? Sign up for one of my free classes. <laughs> <laughs> we have amazing mentors. That's one step. Find other resources around you and um, practice. I mean, like 10,000 hours. Look at Imua Garza. He's killing it, but he spends thousands and thousands and thousands of hours. Noah, who's here, we're in his studio. Like, yeah. these are the guys that, like, they're just constantly working on their craft. And that's what I would encourage you to do is like listen to all your favorite things, be influenced, be inspired, and then get in there and start hammering away. Ed Sheeran wrote a hundred bad songs before he wrote his first good one. He said that. So mm -hmm. I think it's inspiring to know like you're not going to be the bomb right away. And if you are, then imagine how much better you could be mm -hmm. if you kept working on it. So yeah. you're never at your fullest potential right when you start. So keep going keep digging into mm -hmm. it keep discovering like be curious and find your hui find some people you can co-write with find resources like my program other ones there's so many amazing mm -hmm. opportunities out there programs find your hui yeah, Co no. collab collaborate yes I love it. perfect segue to my next question if you could collaborate 
or open for any artist, who would it be? And, you know, um, we'll, we'll do that question, then I got a follow-up for that. <sighs> That's such a hard <laughs> question because it's like, doesn't matter if it makes sense or not, just if I could, op- if I could Anyone, open yeah. for somebody and... And you're like, why is Kimmy A opening for Beyonce right now? <laughs> <laughs> or, or even random or Tupac. Why is she opening up for Tupac? But Stevie Wonder, <laughs> Sade, these are my tops. Like, yeah. I love Beyonce, but I don't want to open for her. I just want to watch her. <laughs> so I'm going to her show. But okay. um, I think it's Stevie Wonder or Sade. Okay, nice. Okay, so follow-up question from this. Like, what would your most perfect dream concert lineup be? Like, three <sighs> artists or a band, dead or alive? Dead or alive? Know, That's ridiculous. You can't give me dead or alive. That's what about, okay, what about a dead lineup? Oh, it feels gosh. weird to say it like that, but you know what I mean? And Israel then, Kamaka, alive. Viva Ole, Bob Marley, and... Oh, my gosh. Royal Gardner. Hmm. I don't know. I've never seen her live, and I've always wanted to. That's, I mean, yeah, that's a that's a solid. And Bob lineup. Marley yeah. as well. I mean, like, hello. Bob Marley is on his own. Just Bob Marley, yeah. Israel Kamaku Vivole, and Royal Gardner. Wow, I love it. Okay, and what about right now? I'm gonna guess Beyonce. <laughs> I mean, she's all on her own. I feel like yeah. so, but I think it's dope. I I loved her tribute to Stevie Wonder. I mean, Stevie Wonder is I've seen him before, but like. There's just something magic <laughs> about him. So Stevie Wonder. Um, I guess we gotta say Beyonce. Who's, who's opening up, Stevie Wonder or Beyonce? Oh my gosh! Of course, Beyonce. I guess I don't know. <laughs> this is like so much politics. But if it's my dream, they're yes. singing together. So mm. the duet. So actually, this is duet. Okay, so okay. it's Bob Mar. I mean Bob Marley. <laughs> gosh, it's Beyonce and Stevie Wonder duet. Ava, oh, Ava Cassidy's dead. Okay, well, I'm going to have dead and alive okay, now. Okay, okay, we Ava Cassidy we got some and Israel, alive. Ava Cassidy and Israel Kamaka Viva Ole, and then Bob Marley and Sade. Okay, nice. Dude, can you imagine those collab songs? It's, oh, my God. It'd be insane, yeah, and Noah would be producing the music live. Bob Marley <laughs> and Sade would be sick. No, get them, come on. Oh, my god. Do what you can. <laughs> okay, that's a great answer, okay. What what are Who's some yours? Me? Oh, yeah. I don't know. I mean, Tupac for sure. I'm oh, a huge yeah, Tupac. Oh, me too. I love Tupac. Yeah. It's too hard. You I can't like put dead yeah. in there. Tupac. I mean, now I'm, I'm really bad with me. Kimye. <laughs> <laughs> well, you just got a private show. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm like so bad with like music. See, this is hard. Yeah. This is really hard. Um, I like Childish Gambino. Yeah. I guess these are hip hop yeah. people though. That's okay. Um, hip hop's great. Uh, yeah, this is hard when you, you're put on the spot. Yeah. Um, I don't know who I listen to. Uh, that's like normal. Um, I'm just gonna say. Did li- you listen to Tech Six Nine? That guy is. No, no, I don't like oh, the okay. new era mumble okay. rap. Like, okay, just checking. No, no, no. I'm old school, like Tribe Called Quest. <laughs> okay. Like that kind. Good taste. Yeah. Um, this, yeah, I like, I like, like you. You're very intentional and meaningful. So I like meaningful lyrics and yeah. you know, stuff like that so i'd probably i'd rather listen to country than tech six night whatever yeah, yeah, his yeah. name is and yeah. all the people like little baby little uzi vert little something little kimchi little whatever they got over there <laughs> there's like so many littles yeah yeah um so yeah i don't know that is a tough question you put me on the spot now i can't give you a good answer um but what, what i want to know now what is some industry hacks you can share with us not life hacks yet. We're saving for that the for music, the grand finale, yeah. My music industry Just hacks? industry hacks, like, you know. How, hire a lawyer that you can have on tap. Like, you okay. need to have a lawyer on tap, number one. Um, have at least someone, one other person on your team. You cannot do it all by yourself. I mean, you should have more, but if you can, just have one other person mm-hmm. on your team. Um, keep track of every song that you write and all the, like, songwriters behind it all the like information around the track and keep all your files so many mm. times the green me we all did it on here we recorded a song and they were like goodbye and we don't <laughs> have any of the tracks none of the stuff if whoever wanted to remix it we'd have nothing mm. so keep track of all the files and things in a stay organized honestly be organized i'm, I'm working on that jordan's always 
Seriously, it'll me for that. Oh, it's I like know, I didn't start it'll using... change your life when you're like, I know exactly where that file is that I really need right now. Yeah, I didn't start using Google Calendar until like maybe two a year and a half ago when Jared from Hawaii versus like, come on, you gotta use. I don't know because I'm just like, I have the best memory ever. I can remember everything. And then Google Calendar mm-hmm. is so good. Yes, <laughs> I'm all about that structure, organization. Yeah. Have a team member. Well, so, oh, have yeah, mm-hmm. lawyers should be on your team. Just not just someone you can hire when you need yeah, them yeah. for really important things. You don't just say yes to everything. You don't just go to the bottom and click yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Did you ever have a hard time saying no? Yes, that's my whole problem. My word this year is boundaries because I realized that if I don't say no, then I'm going to keep pouring from an empty glass. Mm-hmm. So I have to be really intentional and decide what I'm going to say yes to. Mm-hmm. Well, and thanks. I use values as the the lens yes. to make my decision. I, I have my five values and then I decide yes or no based on those values. Well, mahalo for saying yes to us today. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what time of the day do you get your um, best work done? Like like 2 a.m. <laughs> yeah. Yes. That's like, that's the artist, the creative right yeah. there. To, right no one else morning. is up. There's no mm. distractions. It's when I sit and write or mm. record or do stuff. Obviously, I can't do that now because all these kids I got. Mm-hmm. But in my pre-baby life, yeah, yeah, if there was nothing else, it would be middle of the night. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, so after you've done all these things and, you know, you still have a long career ahead. Um, what are you most proud of? Um, personally or professionally? Both. Okay, so personally, it's for sure my family. I'm mm-hmm. so proud. I was sitting in my house the other day looking at my house like, oh, my God, look at what we have. Mm-hmm. And like little, those, like all the little things that represent so much more. Mm-hmm. So my family is the thing I'm most proud of in my personal life and in my career it's definitely my music it's the the time not every single thing I've ever done but it's my vulnerable times of music that I allowed myself to release like New Day there's mm-hmm. another song called Lullabies there's certain songs that I'm most proud of so I would say it's the work I've done the, mm-hmm. my music love that what, what was the one song that was the hardest for you to release like Lullabies it was, it was very I vulnerable. don't even think a lot of people know about it but it's called Lullabies and it was on my I don't even know what album, the first album, but it's just talking about my struggles and the chaos when I was growing up and my dad was violent with my mom and all these things. And so I never wanted to be that vulnerable with my music. I always like to hide it under seven mm-hmm. layers of things. Or like say it's a friend. Straight or up. Yeah, I, yeah. It was me and I couldn't believe I was mm-hmm. the mom in that moment, you know, and now I am a mom. So that was a hard song for me mm-hmm. to release. Yeah. What and make it to morning. That's another one. Make it to morning. Okay, we're gonna listen to all those Lullabies songs right after. and make it to morning and just, just, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I wrote poetry growing um, like growing up, maybe like senior year of high school, and I would I never really expressed myself. Like I'd always write it, you know, but write it from like a different perspective. Like not really about me, like what I see in life, like friends, like pressures of society, you know trying to you know navigate like college and drinking and drugs and all that stuff but i I would never really write about me because it feels a little bit too personal you know too vulnerable since it wasn't until i got older i felt like more comfortable being vulnerable and sharing that did you have that same kind of for sure Mm -hmm. and and now this newest project that i'm working on I'm super going in on like, what do I want to say? What am I feeling? All the things, all the thoughts that have been inside of me. Yeah, it's just like, it's so much more rewarding, like to stand in that challenging area Mm -hmm. and to get through it and to just let it go. Mm -hmm. And I was listening to a podcast on the way here with Macklemore and he's talking about that exact thing. And he was with Jay Shetty on um, Life on Purpose. Um, but he was talking about that, like, when you stop making it for everyone else and you just make it for yourself mm. again. Love that, yeah. It's good. getting back to the roots. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, what is something you wish people knew about you that they don't? And, uh, can you move the mic a little closer, too? Yeah. yeah. Um, something that I wish people knew about me? Yeah, something I maybe, want them to know? Yeah, or, like, maybe something people misunderstand about you. 
I'm kind of an introvert. Mm -hmm. I like to be alone. Like I like to go on trips by myself. I like to be by myself. Mm. Like like uh, vacations. Mm. Like oh, you just you just go on yourself. Like backpack Europe by yourself. That kind. <laughs> Not <or>? that <laughs> intense. Like uh, I need to meet a friend along the way. I love mm. having friends and stuff, but I really like having my own time. Mm -hmm. Um, by myself so like I went to Australia and I went to Melbourne and I saw the penguins and I went <laughs> vintage shopping and I watched a couple live shows and just by myself mm. and actually that was my last trip I went by myself before I had my daughter I found out I was pregnant right mm. after that and it, a lot of life-changing things happened within that time mm -hmm. but I really believe in the power of intention so mm -hmm. I'm kind of a witch. I don't know if you want to know that. But. That's that's the one thing. <laughs> no, She's just kidding. Actual, we're gonna cut this clip. <laughs> Kimi is an actual witch. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, what are your future goals? You know, what what what's the legacy you want to leave here? Land. I want to have a place for artists to be able to to create music specifically so i want land for my children i want land for the business side of things and to provide for the future like i want land that's mm -hmm. number one because so much of who we are is tied to this land and what happens when we don't have this land mm -hmm. all of our stories are told about this land through this land because of this land mm -hmm. so that's number one for me my other purpose is to help help others find their voice you know because as a child I felt like my voice didn't matter and so I I found my voice through music mm -hmm. and through service mm -hmm. so I want to serve the community and serve underrepresented voices mm -hmm. I love that it's so it's so poetic and beautiful that you know as a child you you thought your voice didn't matter and your voice is really like what got you here you know yeah. I think that that's so cool you know it's not just who you are you know you're so much more than just a singer songwriter you know your mother your producer you know all these other things but your voice was like your superpower yeah and that was the one thing that was being contained yes yeah so it's and so that's cool. the point of us saying that is so that others who feel like their mm -hmm. voice doesn't matter that you know that i felt that way yeah. too yeah and I think for like people who who want to start singing or even get into podcasting, a lot of times they're like, who's even going to listen to me? You know, just like you said, do it for yourself. I didn't do yeah. it for anyone else. I didn't even care who listened. I just really wanted to sing and write songs. Mm -hmm. And I put it on MySpace, and then it went that way. And now the world is viral. Everyone's viral. Everything went viral. You just need one video to go viral. But, like, yeah, it's like I get, I get why that sounds so exhausting for someone yeah. that's like, oh, everything is about going viral. It's like, yeah, I get it. Mm -hmm. But when you feel it in your soul and, like, you do it, there's yeah. no better feeling than doing it for yourself. Definitely. Yes. Agreed. Okay, so we're at the point of the podcast where we're ready for your life hack. Okay. So oh my God, my you, can, you can have it's one really good one. You can have a couple, whatever you want. So tell what me your yours. Uh, well, my joking one when I had long hair was like grow out your hair so you don't got to pay for haircuts. Um, <laughs> and then, you know, there's some like actual life hacks. Like, I don't know. Um, I don't, uh, Sierra probably knows, like, pour something down a drain to make it smell good. I don't know, like... Oh, yeah, like lemon, lemon like yeah. doTERRA lemon. Yeah, or something. So there's those life hacks. Because I, I had, like, depend on life hacks. Yeah, I think I think I shared this in the last episode. I'll just say it again uh, with Kalani Pea. He, he asked me what my life hack, and I said, don't take anything personally. That's from the Four Agreements. Yeah, I mean, that's I why I mean, I, I try to live by that anyways, but hearing it, reading it again, it's also a good reminder because, you know, a lot of the times people do things, it has nothing to do with you. They say things, it has nothing to do with you. It, 100% of, yeah. of the time. Yeah. 100% of the time because I have just made 10 years <laughs> with my man and I'll tell you right now, 100% of the time, it's not personal. Everyone's in their own movie watching two different movies in mm -hmm. the same seat next to each other. Yeah. It's crazy, but yes. Yeah. Okay, so my life hacks, whew, man, I, I really rely on them because... Um, because I had all these children and all these things happening all at once. So, number one, I don't know what you even call it, but like 
having lights that you can turn off with your phone. What is that called? Oh, like Alexa, turn off the phone, like that kind. But yeah, just like we installed things so that we don't have to get up and turn every mm. single light off in our house. Yeah, so smart home, smart, smart lights. lights. Okay, yeah. smart home ish kind things yeah, that's yeah. like number one hack for parents or like lazy people basically or this people like, that don't want to get up to um like just like you're so comfy lazy. in bed yeah, yeah. <laughs> No, you no, know no, when you're no, feeling no, no. lazy not and you're la- like, I don't want to get up. You is just go, what, you just be? go, let me just turn it off. So that for sure is number one. I even installed like um, a plug for things that, that don't do it mm-hmm. so that it's a smart plug mm-hmm. and then you just turn it off smart. from there. So that's like number one hack. I also just bought a tiny fridge, like a smaller fridge for my kids. And I put mm-hmm. all of their things lower. And I said, go ahead pack your own lunch Mm. i mean they're two three (laughs) and five but i swear to god kids want to do their own thing so if you just consistently teach them the best hack was like go get yourself a juice baby like you know they don't take advantage of that though oh we have strict rules house rules or something we did we did but i'm trying to instill them with the house rules like Mm -hmm. look if you do that you can do that but this is what's going to happen. Here's the consequence. So mm. I'm trying to give them, Smart. make them have better decisions. And sometimes <laughs> they don't. And then it's like I'm standing in front of the fridge like this. <laughs> but when I don't want to, that's a life hack. Is like mm-hmm. they put their their lunch stuff away in the fridge. They grab it out. Like mm. they help in the process. And that has really changed everything for us to allow them to have all their stuff lower. Mm-hmm. And I literally go on Pinterest and look up hacks <laughs> all the time. Like how do I save on this? So like I have a cubby hole right by my door. That's where they put their backpacks. Mm. The sunscreen is there. We have a pre-packed, pre-pack everything. So I, ha- I buy an extra set of travel size stuff. It's already packed in a travel bag so that when I have to go somewhere... I don't have to think and Mm. pack, you know, like that's one thing as musicians, we tour a lot. I don't know why I never thought of that before, Mm -hmm. but now that I have kids, I have a pre-packed every kind of bag you can think. I have snacks in the middle of my car. That's a good one. Mm -hmm. Um, Wipes, (laughs) wipes everywhere Um, for music. I'm trying to think if I have like a good music hack or like. I use Rhyme Brain. Like, if you're an artist and you're trying to think of cool oh, rhymes, yeah, I that, like Rhyme Brain. That's, that's just a website or an app? Yeah, it's a okay. website. Yeah, I think I would like I use Rhyme Zone or something. Yeah, Rhyme, Rhyme Zone, Zone is the one that most people know, yeah. but I actually prefer Rhyme, Rhyme Brain. Brain. Oh, okay. So that's good. RhymeBrain.com. Okay. <laughs> um, not not a sponsor ad. No. <laughs> Instapot. Insta- oh, Instant yeah. pot. Yeah. That is yeah. life hack Everything for from cooking. Rice to stew. And a, a air fryer. Mm. Air fryer instant pot combo <laughs> so that you get texture. Because remember, mm-hmm. foodies, mm-hmm. got to have your salt, fat, acid. <laughs> got your crunchies over here. Your softened sweets and like saucy over there. Oh, people, foodies will hate me. I'm the worst at like, she, like Sierra at home. She would um like say we have frozen burritos. She like put it on a pan or whatever, get it right, grill, put it in the oven, whatever. I'll just like microwave it or like. You can still do that life hack. <laughs> microwave it, microwave any pizza, whatever, and at the very end, all you gotta do is put it in the air fryer. Mm. I'm not kidding. Couple minutes, crunchy, perfect. Too much time. That takes Two too much more time. minutes. <laughs> yes. I have this argument with everyone. I'm like, just just the Sabaz, Sabasto pizza thing, French bread. I'm like, just give it like five minutes on broil. Change your life from uh, the microwave. I'm straight microwave real quick. Super hot. Burn them out. Always. Eat it. That's, that's Me too. Hard. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. It's, I do burn them out every time. <laughs> Broke them out and burn them out. That's my life hack. Ooh, one more hack. I mean, I could go on forever, but like yeah. we have a bottle Love opener like right here by the fridge and then the place to throw it. So mm. it's like open, sh- throw it. Oh, that's smart. Yeah. So you got a road map right there. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Customize your house for functionality. Yeah. 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 That's, the that's edit. Smart. It's on Netflix. Yeah. Oh, it's it's a documentary. Yeah, it's like a show where like, they, they like teach you. Like a Marie you. Kondo yep. thing, whatever. The home edit. Oh, my God. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. We got to check it out. <laughs> All right. Okay. I just got my last fast fave five questions. Uh, just rapid fire answers. Okay. Favorite leisure activity? Being at the beach. Anything to do with the beach. Nice. 
Favorite airplane snack? Ooh, hurricane popcorn. On the airplane. Never thought of that. You know where big hurricane, like Friday night, that's like my movie night, and we always get hurricane popcorn from Buy Costco. Buy the pre-made bag. Boom, I put that in there. I never thought to take you on the airplane because oh you watch movies. Yeah. It's a good idea. Wow. I'm usually just listening to New Day by Kimmy, but yeah, I'm just going <laughs> to bring up some hurricane popcorn and watch movies instead. Yes. <laughs> it's so good. Okay. Favorite venue to play? Here in Hawaii, the Shell and Blue Note mm. and the Mac. The Mac? What is it? The Mac? It's in Maui. Oh, okay, okay. Nice. Okay, favorite date night restaurant? Hmm. You know, I love so, so many. Maybe Canoes, which is on Big Island Canoes. in Mount Alani. Huh. Um, Ulu, my brother works there. Where's that? <laughs> Big Island. Oh, okay, okay. Um, yeah. What about on Oahu? I don't want to blow up all my spots. <laughs> <laughs> McDonald's. Like, McDonald's. Uh. <laughs> nah, for sure, like fancy, like if we're going to go all out and be like, let's just do it, is Miro's. That food is Miro's. mine. Mind boggling. Miro's. Yeah. Have you eaten at Regal's? Regal? R E G O. R I G O. It's in Kapahulu. No. Oh, you guys should check it out. What is it's that? Really good. Is it it's, Italian? Uh, it's a Spanish Italian fusion. It's one of our favorite places. Oh, I I did eat there. Yeah. I totally did. I yeah, ate there yeah. with Anuhea. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. That's Me and Anuhea ate there. Yeah. Place. Regal's. Yeah. Regal. Okay. Yeah, that's good. That's a good date night spot. Okay. Favorite drink? Uh, it could be alcohol or non-alcoholic. Or Water, I love, and wine. Water and wine. Like Jesus. <laughs> Just like Jesus. And there we end the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that was a great, great answer. It's like a little mic drop. <laughs> Jesus. You got the you got the purple shaka tea oh, can yeah. too, which is like wine. Yeah. I seriously love <laughs> wine. Like... <laughs> It's like foodie. It's like a food thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. The terroir. I don't know. Yeah. It's so fun. And then when you travel, a lot of places are, you know, big, big wine countries like yeah. Argentina. Yeah. Argentina. And when I went to Portugal, I Portugal, drank that yeah. wine. Like, it's amazing. Yeah. And you can try from all different places. It's like, I guess there's people who like wine and people who want to try all like the local beers. Yeah. So I like, like beer too, but yeah. like, there's just something about the story of mm-hmm. wine and like, yeah. Vintage, I don't know, you know, yeah. all that and you can stuff. drink it like this with your with your pinky. For up, sure, right? no, yeah. you... oh no, sorry, <laughs> I don't drink so that's fine. My friend was like this. We were in, we go. That's like for like my bachelorette party. That's where I'm gonna go to like wine country. But we were at some event, like someone's birthday, and she's like this, and the wine is spilling all over her white shirt, and she's just going like yeah. But that's the kind of partying we like to yeah, do. Yeah, yeah. Just wine and food. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. A little swirl. But a little ja- Jamaican hype people in the back. Oh, yeah. yeah. And I've been to bomb wine places that have, like, reggae music playing, mm-hmm. too. It's Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's all we have today. Do you have um, anything else you want to share before we end the podcast? No. Thanks so much for having me. I appreciate mm-hmm. it. I feel so, like, that's so awesome that you've that you're a fan and that you've been wanting to have me on. And I know I'm blessed. I know that like everything that we're given is, can be taken away. And, um, I really do value these kinds of conversations, which is why I wanted to do this and to take the time to do this is because I remember, I mean, I listen to podcasts, so this is how I digest information. Mm -hmm. So I like to, um, support these things and i i love what you're doing as well so, mahalo so mahalo much yeah. thank you for coming on and making time for this i've been trying to get you on uh for so long you know so many nights i just been crying to sierra like what you're like what you she's me? pregnant Why again she come Good. On the <laughs> i'm pretty sure i was like just have my baby or something when you reached out i'm like yeah wait like i gotta get over this other yeah. baby no, thing i, I, I just believe in <laughs> like the timing of everything no. you know things happen been, you know at the right time for yes. sure 100 percent. i think for sure yes so mahala and um where can we find you right here <laughs> right here no. at the <laughs> c major Seven studio recording the i'm next gonna be recording hit. my next album let's go noah <laughs> um just you know the nor what do you mean like oh kimmy a minor dot com on, uh, so yeah social yeah, media kimmy a minor dot com the google play kimmy a yeah. kimmy a with an e not an a mm-hmm. minor yeah. By down by the beach boy. 
<laughs> right on so go do that uh, mahalo kimia for joining us on the hoiverse podcast check us out on hoiverse.com and download our free app right now to start supporting our local businesses spread aloha I be love kind that to app. one another <laughs> You gotta go download it if you didn't already. Right now. Right now. Okay. <laughs> Spread aloha, be kind to one another, and mahalo for listening to us today. New episodes every Thursday, so make sure you follow us and leave a review. I'm your host, Kamaka, and you'll hear me next time on the Hawaii Verse podcast. Ahoy ho. Hawaii Verse. <laughs> <laughs>